Yeah, I know we all hate seeing this. You just want to update your drivers with GeForce experience and all of a sudden, you have to remember what freaking account you used to sign into NVIDIA. And sometimes, you can just never remember. And I know this for a fact because everybody complains about the login on GeForce Experience. Just stop it, NVIDIA. But the login to GeForce Experience is just one of the problems with NVIDIA's software. In this video, we're going to break down a lot of the issues that NVIDIA software has. And starting off, let's look at Shadowplay. I mean, you may or may not know, but Shadowplay released in 2013, which means it is 10 years old now. Like, and in those 10 years, the UI has barely changed at all. So I've got a list of things I'd love to be changed with GeForce Experience. Knowing just how this stuff goes, NVIDIA is gonna roll out a freaking update that does so many of these things really soon or something. It's long overdue. If you have used Shadowplay, then you may have run into the bug. You can't see what monitor Shadowplay is capturing, and then randomly, you have a second monitor, and Shadowplay is just capturing the desktop on your other monitor. This whole time, I've been recording for an hour and a half or something, and I can't use any of the footage because it didn't record the gameplay. It didn't record whatever I was doing on my computer. What would be awesome is if Shadowplay had a capture preview, kind of like how OBS looks, where it's like, oh, you can tell what you're capturing and you know that it's getting the correct thing and your footage is looking exactly how you want it in the end. But in the 10 years, they have yet to do that with Shadowplay. Also, when you go to record, Shadowplay always uses H.264 to encode your videos. Why can't we use H.265, otherwise known as HEVC? NVIDIA GPUs have had support for HEVC all the way. The earliest one that I saw on this chart was the freaking GTX 750. That thing is old, man. That thing is old. So why can't you use H.265 and you have like a little box down here. It's like, do you want to use 264 AVC? Or do you want to use HEVC? And if your GPU doesn't support it, which is unlikely, but it's possible, then that box would just be grayed out. Nowadays, some new GPUs in the 4000 series are supporting AV1 encoding. Why can't you record with AV1 as well? And in fact, if NVIDIA were to gray out the box for AV1, it might even encourage people even more to buy new GPUs. Just a thought because it's like, oh, there's a feature that I can't use. I wanna use that feature. So they don't have a capture preview and they don't have HEVC support or AV1 support for that matter. Something I mentioned is that everything captured with Shadowplay is recorded in the MP4 container. Fundamentally, there's nothing really wrong with that, but it does limit your options. I really wish Shadowplay would start supporting MKV, otherwise known as Matroshka. So what Matroshka file containers protect you from is if your footage or your computer were to turn off or your software were to crash while you're recording, the Matroshka file, MKV files, can be stopped on a dime and you will not corrupt the entire file if it is broken mid encoding. Now MKVs do have the disadvantage that it is slightly harder to work with in software, but it's only getting better supported to this day. But the fact that you could be recording for like over an hour on shadow play and you could just lose all that footage, is just a risk that I don't think many people wanna take. So you should be able to have the option in GeForce Experience to record an MKV. Something else that can perhaps go a little overlooked is the instant replay feature. Now the instant replay feature has to constantly be writing data to your drive. That shortens the lifespan of your drive. The more it's working, the more it gets degraded over time, even though you're not actually saving that data. Now this is even a slight complaint with OBS, but in OBS, when you use instant replay or the replay buffer as it's known in here, it records to your RAM until you're ready to save the file. So your, your drives don't get constantly written too. Now, a complaint about OBS, I wish you could still swap between the two because if you don't have enough RAM to store the file for your replay buffer, then it would technically be better to just write it directly to your drive. I wish you could toggle it to write to your drive or to your RAM because that could save your drive's health over time. But that's it for the video capture. Let's move on to the audio in Shadowplay, which there are some things that really bugged me. Now, I did mention earlier that the UI for Shadowplay has barely changed since it launched. I remember back in 2015, 2016, I had a GTX 770 and it pretty much looked the same as this. Now, something that they did add is that you can record separate tracks for your mic and your game audio, which is cool, but this UI, for recording your mic is just bad. There's so many problems with it. Why can't you do a test input with your mic? 
to see what kind of gain levels you're getting with it and actually making sure that Shadowplay is correctly picking up your microphone. So you could be talking through for an entire recording just to realize that the wrong thing was toggled, but you had no way of checking it before recording. On top of being able to just troubleshoot to see if your mic is going through properly, you could also set these gain values correctly so that your mic isn't clipping. But this kind of pales in comparison to why can't you turn your microphone input into mono? Let me explain this to whoever doesn't typically work with audio. If you see, for example, here in OBS, you see my microphone coming in. And on the left and the right channel, I have it set up in a way that it sends the same signal to both. And this is because your mic is only one line. It's only one input. It's only one microphone sitting here. So it couldn't be a stereo signal. What it is, is it's a mono input. Now in a program like Shadowplay, it records your microphone as a stereo track that would have two inputs, but it only has one. So your microphone sounds like this. You don't want your microphone to sound like this. And some USB microphones will configure themselves properly. If you use like an audio interface, like the one that I have, it's going to sense your mic as the left channel for me at least. Even though yes, this is very easy to fix in post. It is annoying nonetheless. You go to listen back to some footage and you can't fix it until you actually have it in your editor. So you just have to deal with it all the way up until that point, which is very frustrating. Please, Nvidia, give us the option to turn this input into a mono source. This last thing I have for the audio and GeForce experience is a little bit more advanced and maybe a little nitpicky. Just imagine though, if there was more than just two tracks with the audio, and you could do application specific audio capture. So that means you could separate, say like Discord and your game audio. So when you record it with Shadowplay, then you could use that in post. That would be really cool, but that is a little bit more advanced. I think that's more than they want people to be able to do with Shadowplay in general. And we're gonna get to that concept a little bit later where all this software seems like it's a little oversimplified for what it maybe could be. But before that, there's still a couple more things with GeForce Experience I wanna talk about. And that is a little thing called the performance overlay that you see in the top left corner here. For me, there's, there's stats and stuff on here that it's cool to have at a glance, but I don't want to see all of these all the time. I really wish it was possible in this HUD layout here to be able to customize which stats you see and which stats you don't. I don't really care as much to see what the fan speed of my GPU is, but I want to see what the percentage of the fan speed it is. I want to see my CPU temperature as well, but I can't see that. You may have experienced it as well, but there are some bugs with the performance overlay. Sometimes it just stops tracking your FPS for whatever reason, I have no clue. It's not even just a performance overlay that's kind of buggy. The Shadowplay overlay itself can also be <laughs> pretty screwy sometimes. It used to be really bad and they have fixed this over time. It seems like, I don't know, I can't reproduce the issues I've had in the past. Do you see how I have two cursors right now? It's already weird. I think that's how they fix this is because you would open the overlay and you couldn't move your mouse. It'd be something with how it interacts with full screen mode in games and it's just like, you can't deal with it. So I'm glad it's kind of fixed, but all they do is give you a brand new cursor nowadays. I can't make this across in video, but the sensitivity of the mouse changes when it gives me this new cursor. You know, it's a brand new cursor that they give you just for this overlay now. They literally just worked around a bug instead of actually fixing the bug. Another thing is the freaking photo mode in Shadowplay. If you go over here, you can open this mode. It gives you basically the ability to just take a screenshot and add filters to your screenshots. You could add like a nice depth of field in your game, which would be really much harder to add in post. It can get some really cool effects. Say this filter with tilt shift. Now I'm gonna turn off these other ones because they're a little distracting. But this basically gives you a blur that you can tilt on an axis and to me, it's really hard to see exactly where the blur is. And I wish there was some kind of like lines that show me what the heck was going on with it. Probably seeing the same thing. I think it's very hard to see where it is coming from. So I'm like spinning it right now and you can see like, oh, it spun to the top, but it is, uh, it's hard to see where in the heck it's going. So in the photo mode, I wish there's some way of telling like, what effects you're changing and where they are oriented on the screen. Not to mention that this feature isn't really supported in that many games. For example, it isn't supported in Fortnite. But Shadowplay just gives me this idea that it is it's kind of half-assed by Nvidia and they could put a little bit more effort into it if they wanted to make it 
a little bit better. But I do realize that OBS does exist. I mean, I'm using OBS right now. And if you're more advanced with these things, then you'll probably pick up OBS. But imagine if Shadowplay was a little bit better and more in depth for people that have new GPUs, especially like with the mono mic recording. That would be a huge lifesaver for a lot of people to get confused when they get their footage back and it's only on their left ear or their right ear or something. If they made it just a little bit more powerful, it could still stay simple enough that people could get into these things. But they don't have to dive into the beast that OBS can be sometimes. Uh, starting out, this can be pretty confusing. There's tons of resources to the community. So Shadowplay could be a great jumping off point. And for me personally, that's where I started, but I pretty quickly moved on to OBS because it's just how limited Shadowplay is. But that's all I'm gonna talk about for Shadowplay for now. It can be so much better than it is, but it's just being capped at this current moment. Let's bring up the rest of NVIDIA's software. Now, a lot of the more hardcore people in the community are just gonna say, don't use GeForce Experience, but welcome to reality. Most people use GeForce Experience for getting all of their driver updates and everything. Like technically you can launch games through this. I don't know who the heck uses their driver software to launch games, not me. Technically speaking, this is just a vessel for you to get your drivers in and you have to log into an account to do this, which is just ridiculous. If Nvidia happens to, eh, people are gonna say Nvidia doesn't have driver problems, but if Nvidia does drop a driver that just for some reason, it hurts the performance on your system or you're getting bugs and glitches and stuff, you can't roll back your drivers in this software. You just have to wait. And if you're using GeForce Experience, that's what you have to do. Now people are just gonna say, oh, go to Nvidia's website and download your drivers like that, forget GeForce Experience, all that crap. Because going to Nvidia's website all the time just to check if you have a driver update is annoying already. But then having the streamlined approach that's in GeForce Experience is better. But if you want to roll back your drivers, you have to go to their website to do that. Why isn't rolling back drivers, if something goes wrong, an option in GeForce Experience? Explain to me this, NVIDIA. Also, GeForce Experience is just the least powerful software I've ever seen in existence. Let's click on the settings menu up here. So what can you do in here? Oh, you can see what specs are in your system. Cool, most things should be able to do that. Just showing you that all this stuff is ready in your settings menu, that's where it's showing you to do that. Um, you can toggle a few things over here. You can do a little bit of image scaling, which is uh, as in depth as they wanna give you in here. And then you can toggle notifications. You have an entire tab for your account that doesn't freaking matter. Why do you need an account to log into this app? It doesn't make any sense. There's, not, there's nothing to this software. It's showing where, you, where it finds the games that you don't use to launch in here, like who uses this menu. And that's because Nvidia hides away a lot of their settings in the control panel. And we all know that the control panel looks like it has a UI that dates back to like 2003. If you think Shadowplay hasn't been touched, this hasn't been touched in 20 years. But this is where you find all your really powerful settings. This is where you set up your displays. This is where you get to manage all your settings for how your GPU behaves in 3D scenarios. This is where you set up G-Sync, where it is very important if you want a smooth experience with your display. But this is all hidden behind the control panel, which has a really dated interface. And I think that there is a reason behind this. Nvidia splits up their software into like GeForce Experience, which is kind of oversimplified, and then control panel, which has a bad UI that kind of deters people. And that's because all the settings that NVIDIA wants you to have the ability to mess with is in GeForce Experience, which basically means they don't want you to touch anything about your GPU. And the people that are a little bit more tech savvy, kind of know a little bit more what they're doing, can hop in control panel and deal with the bad UI to push past it and get the useful settings out of it. I think that is the reason for the dichotomy with NVIDIA software. And maybe even one of the reasons why NVIDIA users don't tend to complain as much about driver problems is because they don't have as many buttons and knobs to mess with to destroy their GPU, as opposed to people that own AMD GPUs or have experience with them say that it has a lot of driver problems. And maybe that's just because more power is given to you. And maybe this might be a little controversial, Maybe you're a little bit dumb. Because nowadays the adrenaline software from AMD is really powerful. I have a Radeon iGPU in my laptop and I was very impressed with the software when I was using it. Now, because it's an iGPU, it, does, it doesn't give me as much access as like a full fat discrete GPU, but it impressed me. I can record footage on my iGPU, my integrated graphics through adrenaline. And it was really easy to set up. There's performance overlays and you can tinker with things like your, your power draw and your fan speed and everything. 
you get a lot more control through the mainstream software on AMD as opposed to GeForce Experience where you get little to no control. And the fact that MSI Afterburner, the monitoring and overclocking utility that a lot of people use for their graphics cards may or may not be supported in the coming years because of issues with the Russian developer and the war in U Ukraine, AMD may have made the right move to include a lot of those tools in the software natively, whereas NVIDIA is still not doing that for whatever reason. NVIDIA really needs to improve their software. Yes, uh, many are gonna say it's very reliable, but as I mentioned earlier, that maybe just because we're all a little dumb, okay? And we mess with things that we really shouldn't be. The fact that control panel is so hard to work with is probably a good thing. <laughs> but I would love to see their software be a little bit more powerful. And a lot of it definitely needs an overhaul of features. It's getting pretty dated at this point. But what do you guys think about NVIDIA software? Is it just the right level of complexity? Is it not enough for you? Has Shadowplay given you problems over time like it has me? Shadowplay is the big thing that needs a lot of help. But uh, I'll see you guys in the comments with your thoughts. And also I'll see you in the next video. Peace.